Welcome back to the channel today and the purpose of today's video is quite simple. It's off the back of the AdGuard video that I've just released alongside that. So if you haven't seen that yet, feel free to go and have a little look. This one is specifically about the AdGuard VPN and how to get this up and running on the GLINet series of routers. Because if you go to AdGuard VPN set up for open WRT routers, which is a GLINet routers kind of run on, but they're kind of customized. If you follow these instructions to the end, you'll find that on GLINet routers, this doesn't work. And you're probably thinking, well, why is that? Basically, it's down to how GLINet management interfaces kind of override a lot of system settings and scripts. Uh, and essentially, we need to kind of tweak these instructions a little bit. So before we get uh, too far into it, these are some of the prerequisites of today's video. You're going to have to have an active AdGuard VPN subscription because it's not free. I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can get 80% off that VPN if you're interested. That's a limited time offer, so feel free to jump in as soon as you do, and hopefully that is still active. It is at the time of releasing this video, and you can also use the, the code KLTECH80 for that 80% off the AdGuard VPN. You're also going to need to obviously have your GLI net router turned on and connected to the internet, so it, you must be in a position right now where that's fully functional and working. I'm using the Spitz Pulley, but I do have the Slate 7 and the original Slate as well. So again, make sure that you can access the internet before even attempting this, so everything works fine. You must know the administrator password for your router. You should be if you're following along with this video, if it belongs to you. And the other thing we're going to be using is an SSH client. And basically, that could be a lot of different things. I'm going to be using the command prompt terminal on Windows, uh, the PowerShell. If you're on Mac or Linux, as long as you can uh, SSH into other devices like I'm about to do, that's great. Uh, make sure you are connected to that router, which I am via Wi-Fi. I am. But if you're with Ethernet, that's absolutely fine, as long as you know what you're doing. The next step for me is connecting to the router via SSH. To do that, I need to pop this specific key in. Normally, we would just run SSH root at 192.168.8.1, but on the PowerShell, for whatever reason, um, it can't negotiate the cipher quite correctly. So this basically says, just accept whatever the router is giving us. All links will be in the description below. You don't have to do much work here, folks. Just copy and paste. When you're happy with that, hit that. Now it'll ask for your router's password, or it might have popped up saying it can't authenticate this, that, or the other. Just type yes and hit enter, and then you'll get prompted for your router's password. This is whatever password that you've put onto the GLI net router when you set it up. So I'm going to chuck mine in. It's the same password you use when you log in. There we go. And we're in. When you're into your router, you should see something along these lines. Again, I'm on the uh, Spitz Pulley, the um, 4G GLI, GLI net router. The next thing we're going to want to do is run a few of these commands. Again, everything in the description below. The first thing we're going to do is is run opkg update that updates the repositories we have to do this every single time the router starts by the way simply because it kind of wipes this out of memory that's updated the next thing we're going to do is install a certificate dependency opkg install curl kmod ton ca certification this installs uh, basically the ability to create a tunnel and you'll notice that we are closely following the setup instructions on the official page by the way so we've SSH'd in, you might get that popping up. Just do type yes and enter. Choose an SSH terminal. We've done the update command. We are running the kmod ton command. And now we're about to run the next one. In fact, I could probably just go along with this with you so that you can see it from scratch. In fact, I'll even show you where things go wrong so we know where to correct them. So that's in there now. So basically, that is installed ad guard, that command there. Now, essentially, what it's telling you to do, to do at this point is basically uh, log in to ad guard on the, the router. The reason we have to do this, by the way, is because ad guard doesn't have a wire guard protocol and it doesn't use open VPN protocols. It uses IPsec. Uh, an IKE VM and uh, sorry, IKE V2. You notice that it does say WireGuard is coming soon. However, I have had it on good authority that that coming soon might not be as soon as we think. Um, apparently, AdGuard are working on an open source protocol that is taking a priority over WireGuard. Not no idea why they decided to do that. That's that's up to them. Um, but I have had that from um internal connections with AdGuard. So yeah, back over to the instructions of command prompt. So once we've run that command, um, there we're gonna run the command to log in. Now, basically, instead of just copying and pasting that command in, we're gonna do this from the path because 
that's where it was installed. So we're going to run opt forward slash adguard VPN CLI adguard CLI login. Now it says that I'm already logged in, which it's true because I did this earlier on. Um, but I'm wondering if I can just log out to show you how that works. Yes, there we go. So you get this like kind of like little interface here. We're going to use user and password. In my case, that's Keith.Lewis at KL. Watch your spelling here, folk. Okay. And then the password is whatever the password is you've got set up. Uh, in your VPN account. Now, bearing in mind, when you set up AdGuard uh, VPN for the first time, your account doesn't automatically have uh, a password associated with it. It comes with like an OTP code. So log in to your account, go to settings, and in security, you might have a set password feature right by there. So click that. You can, you can still have the preferred login with one-time code. That's not a problem, but you you won't by default have a password created. So just set one before you start this. Uh, yeah, and the password for me is my online. And there's my password pasted and enter and we're logged in. Okay, the next stage here is going to be to list location. Again, we need that bit at the beginning there. Always opt add guard VPN CLI, add guard VPN CLI, list locations. And then it tells us all the different places that we can connect to. Then we can uh, run this uh, command, which is the connect command uh, and location name. By the way, we can just put down the two letters on the left hand side for example gb for me in britain oh yeah of course the full command and then it says you are now successfully connected to the vpn now as we've connected to the vpn the next set of instructions say to amend the firewall now we don't need to just copy this entire block because we already have sshed in so we can just copy from here down and essentially what this command is doing is it's adding a new unmanaged interface called turn zero we're going to paste that in and don't forget to hit enter on the last command because that doesn't get processed until you do that reloads the firewall with those new uh, bits and bobs then it's going to say show existing firewall configuration and these are existing firewall configuration if we scroll up and basically we're looking for zones these are rules here's the zone and it says this will show the configuration file with all the zones listed look for a section like firewall at zone one or something similar where the option name is wan so in zone that's lan but we have zone one at wan there firewall at zone one name wan which is what we're looking for we'll see that the current connections in there are wan wan six wan second wan and modem two one which is the 4g sim card yours might be a little bit different if you're running this on a gli net router that doesn't have a 4g sim card but essentially those are all the things that allow um get the internet out so that's fine we can also limit the information in this list just using that command and that if i just clear the screen and run that command one more time it shows us uh, specifically that it is zone one um, essentially all we need to do at this point is uci add list firewall at zone and the number you found the wan in okay we can run all these three together paste it's run the first two we need to click enter on the last one now at this point you can either follow with this or you don't have to follow with this right this essentially is where we we create a kill switch if you will um so while the vpn is connected if it fails for any reason you lose the internet access i'm not going to well yeah i mean you could if you want to i'm i'm not going to do that i don't want the kill switch myself but if you do you would just run these commands here and then if you want to change your mind again you would run those commands and it would you know turn the kill switch off you can also create a script here that connects every startup as well but essentially we're done as far as these instructions tell us to go because after setting up the firewall rule and having been connected to the internet things should be working if we ping google.com you'll see that we've got an active pin there a ping there if we ping this dns range we'll see we can connect so that is work the problem is if we open a new tab and go to google while connected to this vpn we don't have an internet connection if i if i disconnect from this vpn this net and go to google magically we have internet so this is what happens when you follow just those instructions and this is what i was hitting my head against as well trying to figure out what was going wrong with that but essentially we just need to do the following we're going to basically add another zone to this whole setup so if i clear the screen what i want to do here is this is first of all i want to install a text editor um, you can use any one you want vi uh, nano i'm going to install nano because that's what i'm used to opkg install nano i'm then going to do nano and then i'm going to do forward slash etsy config firewall which opens up this interface and essentially what we want to do is go down until we find config forwarding which is there and if we go up one and we create two spaces and then go up one more time that gives us a little bit of a, a um, an area to create a new zone for us. We're going to type in there config zone. Again, I'll leave all this in the description below. Go all the way under the zero. 
sorry, the O. Go all the way under the O. And then we're going to do this. Option, name, ADG for AdGuard. List, device. And then we're going to put our ton zero in that we created. We're going to do option, input, accept option option forward rejection output accept watch your spelling here is very important oh and i tell you what these should actually all be uppercase accept reject lucky for you you can just copy and paste this um we're also going to do um option masquerade one to denote a yes option uh oh don't forget those spaces option mtu underscore fix one to denote a yes and that's it all right i'm gonna i'll put this in the link in the description below so they'll find them in the description of the video double check your spelling on everything and we're going to do control o on the keyboard and enter to save what we want to do at this point as well is go over to our main router interface go to system down the bottom to advanced firmware and go to lucy which is the advanced uh, configuration in here you want to go to network and firewall and then down below you're going to see our add guard with ton zero firewall zone we're going to click edit and essentially we just need to make sure that masquerading is on mss clamping is on covered networks are unspecified forward to destination zones are unspecified but allow forward from source zones LAN. You have to click the drop down box again to get rid of it. And then we're going to click save. So that way now in the zones, you've got LAN forwarding to WAN and the AdGuard tunnel. Um, input we're going to put as reject because we're using a commercial VPN. So we'll have um, reject, accept and reject. And it says forward can be accepted or rejected. I'm just reading some notes here from the GLR INA engineers. So forward can be accepted or rejected. It just depends on if you want to access the lower level devices or not. And then normally for commercial VPN, forward is set to reject. Okay, so we're looking good. So probably could have done that in the firewall configuration but there we go i've done it um there this looks good so if we do save and apply now we're going to go back to the ssh session Control x out of here and we're then going to reconnect to the firewall sorry we're going to reconnect to our vpn with the command opt add guard vpn cli add guard vpn cli connect l gb for bro now when we go to google and we refresh it you'll notice the internet is working and if we go to what's my ip instead of vodafone we should see yeah, vpn server london england data camp limited which is all part of adguard vpn network normally you would see vodafone there for me for you it'd be whatever isp you normally have but simple as that it's uh it's a bit of a hassle to go around but because uh, adguard don't provide that wireguard or open vpn configuration this is how you do it so basically it's follow everything in adguard vpn up to setting up the firewall rules and then follow me for the additional configuration by creating an AdGuard zone and then allowing that forward um, in Lucy settings, literally on the LAN there, sorry, on the AdGuard there. That forward from source zones LAN is important, but so are these other options. So I hope I haven't confused you too much for that. It was boggling my mind trying to figure out how to do this. So real big thanks to um, the team there at GLINet for helping set this up. Um, yeah. And also to say that I was inspired to do this video from a post on Reddit, which I'll include here, but obviously hide the username. Thank you very much to you, user. You set me on this path to do this and I'll catch you all in the next one.